When I first met my boyfriend, he hated mushrooms. If they were like anywhere on the table, he would have a gag reflex. And this bothered me because mushrooms are amazing. So I dug deeper into his issues and I realized that he had only had soggy, slimy, soppy, sad mushrooms without any flavor. Usually these white button mushrooms cook down really, really soft and squishy and weird. So today I'm gonna to share with you the recipe that converted him from a mushroom skeptic into a mushroom lover. It's my creamy vegan mushroom stroganoff. It is so flavorful, delicious, and it's gonna teach you a lot about how to cook mushrooms the right way. The first thing that got Max to fall in love with this mushroom stroganoff dish is using a variety of different mushrooms instead of just using the classic white button mushroom. First, I went with some cremini mushrooms. These are brown button mushrooms. They have more flavor than the regular white ones and I love using them because they're inexpensive and you can get them at most grocery stores. Then I went with some shiitake mushrooms. These are a lot bolder in flavor and meatier in texture. I really really like them. Then I brought in some oyster mushrooms which are absolutely beautiful. They're really meaty but also velvety at the same time. They make a great meat substitute and they're not at all watery or soggy and taste wise they're a little bit similar to these guys. They're not too intense or too earthy. They're just kind of mild and nice. And then I used some my Taki mushrooms. They're also called hen of the woods because they kind of taste like chicken. They're a little spicy, a little earthy, and they naturally contain L-glutamate, which is basically the essence of umami, which is why they're so good. And when you cook them, they crisp up so beautifully that you kind of forget you're eating mushrooms. My taki mushrooms have this thick white base at the bottom. That is too tough to eat, so cut that off. You can save it and freeze it for later to add to mushroom stocks. And that's kind of a principle you can use for all of these mushroom stems and scraps. You can add them to a mushroom broth. Oyster mushrooms and maitake mushrooms are delicate enough that you don't actually need to slice them. You can just gently rip them apart into pieces with your hands. This is extremely satisfying to do. I find it very therapeutic. You don't have to use this precise combination of different mushroom varieties, but you do want to think about the different tastes and textures of the mushrooms you are using. And even more important than the different varieties is how you cook the mushrooms. Instead of cooking mushrooms for just a few minutes until they're tender, I like to cook them for a longer time until they're deeply browned and crispy. I use three main techniques in this recipe to get crispy brown mushrooms. First, you need to cook the mushrooms in two different batches when you're working with this many mushrooms. I know it's a little extra work, but when when you overcrowd mushrooms into a pan, they're just gonna steam instead of crisp up and steamed mushrooms are not very good mushrooms. Two, in order to let the mushrooms sear, you have to use a relatively high heat and you kind of have to let them just hang out and do their thing and not stir too frequently. And three, unlike a lot of other vegetables, you don't want to salt mushrooms when you first start cooking them. That's because mushrooms are these porous little sponges and they have a lot of moisture. So when you salt them, you're drawing out that moisture and that's gonna release a lot of liquid and again, it's gonna steam those mushrooms instead of letting them crisp up and get brown. Instead, I cook the mushrooms for a good nine or 10 minutes until they're nice and browned, and then I add the salt. All right, that was a lot of mushroom talk, but I'm sure that if you follow these tips, you too can convert the mushroom haters in your life. I also sauteed the mushrooms with some leeks. Leeks are a little bit sweeter, milder, and more delicate than onions, and when you combine that with the earthy, toasty, woodsy, nutty mushrooms, it's just a love affair, but like a good love affair, not one of those scandalous ones you read about on Twitter. We're gonna chop off the dark green stems at the top. You could use those to make a broth or a stock. And then we're gonna chop these up, not too finely because they are gonna cook down for quite a while with the mushrooms. Leeks have all the sand hiding up in here, so you wanna give them a thorough wash after you chop them. Cover them with some cold water in a bowl and use your hands to just kinda like swirl it around to get the dirt loose and then scoop out the leeks with your hands or with a slotted spoon. And since we just washed these, I'm gonna pat them dry so that our mushrooms don't get any excess water on them. I've divided the mushrooms roughly into even batches and I'm gonna do the same with the leeks and we'll get started on our first batch. You wanna wait until the oil is very hot and then add your leeks and mushrooms. Cooking at medium high heat is going to help these mushrooms brown really nicely. Let the mushrooms and leeks hang out for a minute or two before you stir them and just stir occasionally, not too often, and cook them for about nine or 10 minutes or until the mushrooms are really well browned. While the mushrooms and leeks are on the stove, I'm gonna prepare a couple other things. We're gonna mince up some garlic, and some fresh thyme. If you don't have fresh thyme, you can substitute with dried thyme. Another thing we can do while the mushrooms are cooking is prepare our roux-like mixture. I say roux-like mixture because a roux is traditionally just flour cooked in butter or oil, and this is kind of a roux plus. We're gonna use one and a half cups of vegetable broth, a fourth of a cup of flour, two tablespoons of tamari, and one tablespoon of vegan Worcestershire, Worcestershire, Worcestershire sauce. 
It's a lot easier to say when I pretend to have a New England accent. Worcester, Worcestershire sauce. You need one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire sauce is typically not vegan, but there are several brands that sell vegan varieties like this one. It's traditionally used in stroganoff. It has a lot of savory depth of flavor and it helps enhance rich meaty dishes. It's been about 10 minutes, so let's go check on those mushrooms and leeks. We're gonna add half of the garlic and thyme mixture to the leeks and mushrooms, along with a quarter teaspoon of kosher salt. And we'll reduce the heat to medium to prevent burning and cook for another like two to four minutes until it's really aromatic and the mushrooms are deeply browned. We're gonna set this mixture aside. We're not gonna use it until the end. And then we'll do the same process with the remaining leeks and mushrooms as well as garlic and thyme. While the second batch of mushrooms is cooking, we're gonna get started on our next step, which is to open a bottle of dry white wine. And since we have a few minutes, I'm just gonna have to have a little glass of wine myself. Once our mushroom mixture is cooked down, it's time to deglaze our pot with some white wine. And you wanna scrape up those brown bits because that is where so much flavor lives and you wanna incorporate that back into the dish. I'm using a nonstick pot, so there's not a lot of scraping up to be done, but if you're using a Dutch oven, you gotta do a lot more work. Simmer the wine for about three minutes. You wanna wait until it's mostly evaporated and you can no longer smell alcohol. Next, we'll pour in that savory vegetable broth roux mixture. The flour in that is going to help thicken this up a bit and we're gonna bring that to a simmer and then add one can of coconut milk. This is gonna mimic that rich creaminess that sour cream traditionally brings to a stroganoff as well as two tablespoons of tahini. It's gonna add creaminess, a slightly nutty taste that I absolutely love. Two tablespoons of nutritional yeast that's going to enhance the umami flavors we already have in the mushrooms and a teaspoon of paprika and some kosher salt. Whisk that all up and we'll bring it to a simmer. You wanna cook that for about 10 minutes until the sauce is really beautifully thickened. Once the stroganoff sauce is at a simmer, it would be a good time to start cooking your pasta. Traditional stroganoff is made with twisted egg noodles. This is the closest thing I could find that is egg free. It's this really cute twisted pasta shape. I'll link it below because I cannot remember the name of it right now. Finally, we're gonna add in some Dijon mustard. The acidity in there is going to freshen up the richness of this dish with a slightly sharp finish. Now add in your cooked pasta and toss to coat. All right, now for my favorite part, the taste test obviously, but sprinkling some of these brown mushrooms right on top before serving. Having a crispy kind of mushroom component is not traditional in a stroganoff because it's mostly just a creamy only dish, but traditional stroganoff also has beef and sour cream in it. I feel like the authentic stroganoff train left the station a long time ago. Also, the slightly crispy mushrooms are what made Max fall in love with this recipe, so I really love them here. I like to finish this dish with some fresh chopped dill. There's something really Really lovely about dill with mushrooms and leeks. It's gonna bring a nice kind of lemony herbaceous freshness to a very creamy and rich dish. This is exquisite. I really don't have any other words, especially with the mushrooms on top and the dill. It is so perfect, but I guess I should probably get input from the mushroom skeptic in the room. Give it a taste. You know I like this. I don't know why you're making me do this. You're in the title. You have to be on camera. You have to speak before you eat again. Let's let the viewers know what you what you think. It's really good. You did a great job. <laughs> Shut up. Be give give your honest feedback. Yeah. First of all, it's not slimy like most mushrooms are, which is probably the most important thing for me. The dish has just got this super umami kind of flavor. It's creamy, the sauce is just amazing, and the kind of crispy mushrooms on top are a, a really nice touch, I think. Would you say it's delightful? It is it is delightful, I'm delighted. Would you like to do the outro? Uh, no. Okay, well, if you like comforting pasta dishes, I made a short playlist for you right here. Right there. Oh, right here. Bye.